I've been lied to over and over since the iPhone came out in like 2009 or something like that about having the ability to write your business logic once and then being able to package that as a library and just plop it in your Android application, your iOS application, and your desktop application. At just, you know, the mythical write once, use anywhere. And all these solutions always fall short or they are super painful to like maintain. And I know I'm going to get trash in the comments, but my opinion is that writing these business logic layers, these like frameworks in Rust is just superior to using something like Flutter and freaking Dart or whatever, some made up language or React Native under TypeScript bullshit. So, you know, take it or leave it. And I want to be clear, I did look at Dioxus and it looks fantastic. But when you look at the features that they currently support, they do not even support the camera yet. So, you know, it's just not ready for production, in my opinion, for my use case. Maybe if I wanted to do more like a Reddit kind of app where you're just calling a bunch of web services and rendering the responses efficiently, I think that Dioxus will be great. So I'll keep an eye on that and maybe, you know, give it, give it a year from now and I'm, sh I'm sure that they'll be in a much better position. Without further ado, let me introduce you to Unify. Unify is a language bindings generator for Rust. It is backed by the Mozilla Foundation, so you'll see that the docs are peppered with like browser talk and stuff. It's actually pretty cool. I've been using it for around three weeks. I wrote some bindings to be able to expose my video call teleconferencing system from like the web original design to native iOS and Kotlin bindings. And it's been a great experience. And my use case is actually pretty complex because I needed to not only bring like business logic, I also need to bring an entirely new network stack using Quick, which is at the end of the day is just UDP, but still. And Unify aced it. I was able to successfully create bindings to my video call framework. I'm so happy. Today, we are going to read a little bit of the docs and then we'll do a tutorial together I am confident that if you are looking to reuse your Rust code in your iOS application, you'll find this useful. So what's the motivation for Unify? We are interested in building reusable components for sync and storage related browser functionality. Things like storing and syncing passwords, working with bookmarks and signing in to your Firefox account. We want to write the code for these components once in Rust, of course in Rust. <laughs> we want to easily reuse these components from all the different languages and all of the different platforms for which we build browsers, which currently includes JavaScript for PCs, Kotlin for Android, and Swift for iOS. And of course, we want to do this in a way that is convenient, maintainable, and difficult to mess up. How? In an aspirational world, we could get these kind of easy cross-language interop for free using WASM Bindgen and the WebAssembly interface types. Imagine writing an, an API in Rust, annotating it with some WASM Bindgen stuff and compiling it into a WebAssembly bundle and being able to import and use that bundle from any target language, complete with a rich high-level API. Yay, <laughs> but that tooling, it just doesn't exist right now. But it doesn't mean that we can't take a small step in that general direction while the Rust and Wasm ecosystem continues to evolve. So this gives you a glance of the vision. So, you know, when finally the Wasm community delivers on their vision of using Wasm containers that work like Docker containers, but without all the BS Linux specific stuff, then in a few years, this might like Wasn might replace might replace this, but it's it's just not ready to to be used right now. Unify is a tool that automatically generates foreign language bindings targeting Rust libraries. The repository can be found on GitHub. It fits in the practice of consolidating business logic in a single Rust library while targeting multiple platforms, making it simpler to develop and maintain a cross-platform codebase. Note that this tool will not help you to ship a Rust library to these platforms, but it will help you to avoid writing bindings code by hand. So what does this mean? This means that you will get, say, a dynamic library and a Swift uh, header file. And then it's your job to use Xcode build and all those like Apple tools too, 
package everything as a framework and then plop it into your iOS application. Unify requires you to describe your interfaces via either proc macros or in an interface definition language based on web IDL file. These definitions describe the methods and data structures available to the targeted languages and are used to generate Rust scaffolding code and foreign language bindings. This process can take place either during the build process or be manually initiated by the developer. Supported languages. Unify comes with full support for Kotlin, Swift, and Python. Unless it's specified otherwise, you can expect all features in this manual will work with these languages. All right, so we want to create and expose a very complex add function that for some reason only takes unsigned integers. Say your company has a simple math crate with the following lib.rs and top brass or like management will like you to expose the business critical operation to Kotlin and Swift. Don't panic. We'll show you how to do that using Unify. So here we have the function. We have our, our lib.rs prerequisites. This tutorial builds on our arithmetic and creatively named arithmetic proc macro examples, which will be useful when we have op omitted things. Here we will be creating a math library, blah, blah, blah. So they walk you through creating a library, which uh, I'm sure you guys know. And then add unify as a dependency. So if we go to our cargo.toml, I already did that. Unify has not reached version 1.0 yet. Versions are typically specified as zero point minor version. And then they say build your crate as a C D lib. So it's a dynamic library or something. Yeah. So dynamic. So when you specify your crate type of, as this, a dynamic system library will be produced. This is used when compiling a dynamic library to be loaded from another language. This output will be will create the star.so files on Linux star dylib files on macOS and dot dll files on Windows. Note, you also need to add static library create type if you target iOS. So we will add that. And I think I already added that. Yes. Let's go to the next step, describing the interface. There are two ways of describing your interface. Proc macros, proc macros or procedural macros can describe your interface and then you just add this macro on top of your function like this and then you're all set. And I really like this because the alternative of doing this is you need to maintain a, a UDL file, an interface definition file, what is exposed and available to foreign language bindings. In this case, we are only playing with a primitive type and not custom data structures, but we still want to expose the ATH method. So this is a matter of taste, I think, for now. I think that adding this proc macros is newer. So originally they only supported IDL, but now they added proc macros and they just keep building on it. So my recommendation is to use proc macros. I'm happy to have you guys fight me in the comments and we'll figure it out together. <laughs> Next, we need to Unify requires that our generated Rust scaffolding code is included in your project. For proc macros, most of this is conveniently generated by the macros. If you use UDL files, you need to generate this scaffolding, then include the generated.rs in your project. So we are using proc macros. So that's all we have to do. Here, we just add this macro call here and we're all set. Foreign language bindings. That's that's the meat, guys. This this is exactly what we need to use this library in our application. By now, you have set up your crate and Cargo Build has successfully created your library. The next step is to have Unify generate source code for your foreign language. It doesn't help you build this code. It just generates it for you. Nice. I don't want to write shit. Creating the bind gen library. First, make sure you have installed all the dependencies, which we do. Ideally, you will then run the unify bind gen binary from the unify crate to generate your bindings. But if not on cargo nightly, you need to create a binary in your project that does the same thing, which we did. So we are, we're up to speed here. And then added the binary to the cargo.toml file. You can now run Unify bind gen from your project using cargo run features Unify CLI binary Unify bind gen. That's fantastic. And I bet you now I want to generate my Swift bindings. I, I bet you they have the command right here. 
So this command will generate the, um, the Swift header file, I will call it. So it generates the Swift file with a bunch of stuff that it needs internally. And at the end of the day, if we look for our function, it's right there. And like what this helps you with is like casting between Swift types and Rust types. So it's pretty, pretty cool. And sure enough, just like they mentioned at the beginning of the documentation, they do not provide the code necessary to transform these like dynamic library and like plop it into Xcode. So I will uh, add a link to a repository where I do, I want to share that code with you because it is pretty, pretty evil, this script that I came up with. And at the end of the day, what you end up with or what you want to end up with is a, a, a framework that then you just throw in Xcode you throw it into Xcode and then you also insert the header with all the generated unify bindings and then you can just use it in your app. So this is a Rust function. And if we run it on our phone, we see that the phone does render the result of the computation from Rust right into the iPhone, which is pretty cool, I think. If you want to learn more about all the video stuff that I'm working on, you want to probably watch this video here. See you in the next one. Bye.